Okay, let's get into the actual details of photosynthesis. What is happening inside of the plants? I'm gonna walk us through, I've got a lot of text on this slide. We're gonna walk through this, but then we're gonna look at a picture and go through these same exact steps. Okay, so thinking about inside of a chloroplast, inside of the thylakoid membrane, that's where our pigment molecules are hanging out, or in, in, they're embedded in that membrane. So what's gonna happen first off? is a pigment molecule absorbs a photon. A photon is just a little packet of light energy. Okay, so the pigment molecule absorbs some light and that energy helps to energize an electron. That electron gets excited. It's raised from a ground state to an excited state. That just means its energy level increases. And that's unstable. That's kind of like the hot potato. Same idea as in cellular respiration. If you have an excited electron, um, molecules tend to hand that off as quick as they can. So the electron that's energized, it's going to start jumping around. It'll jump from one pigment molecule to the next. Uh, it's going to hop from chlorophyll to chlorophyll all around inside of the photosystem until finally there's a molecule that can hang on to it. And that's called the primary electron acceptor. The original electron that got excited in the first place, it has to get replaced. And this is where water comes into play. An electron is extracted from water to replace that um, original electron. So in the process, the water molecule falls apart and oxygen gas gets released. Okay, our energized electron, what happens to it next? It gets handed down an electron transport chain. We know about those and it heads off to another photosystem. In the process, as it's being handed down the electron transport chain, it's going to um, provide some energy to pump protons across the membrane. This should sound super familiar. This happened in cellular respiration too. So you've kind of already learned about this. So protons, hydrogen ions, get pumped across the membrane. That builds up a gradient, which can then be used to drive the synthesis of ATP. All right, finally, the electron gets re-energized again with a little bit more light and handed off to an electron shuttle molecule. Let's look at a picture. Pictures are very helpful in situations like this. So we are inside of a chloroplast full of these thylakoid membranes. We're just gonna zoom in on one little thylakoid here. Here is the membrane that we're talking about. And you can see a number of things embedded in that membrane. Here's where we're gonna start. This is photosystem number one. So a photon, a little packet of light, a photon comes down, energizes an electron in this photosystem. Um, the, the little green, green dots in here are representing chlorophyll molecules. So those are our pigment molecules. So an electron from chlorophyll gets energized and bounces around gets handed off down this electron transport chain. Meanwhile, the electron gets replaced. We pull an electron out of a water molecule in order to replace the missing electron in this photosystem. Oxygen gas gets released in the process because that water molecule falls apart and releases oxygen. Okay, our busy electron gets handed down the electron transport chain in the process some hydrogen ions are pumped across the membrane. These are acting as pump molecules. And the electron makes its way into the second photosystem where it gets re-energized. Another photon of light comes in, re-energizes it, and the photosystem hands it off to the electron shuttle molecule and ADP plus takes it up. Um, this is a familiar molecule also from cellular respiration. This is going to head off into the next part of photosynthesis. We haven't talked about the Calvin cycle yet, so we're, we're headed there next. Okay, but this is doing a nice job of recapping everything we've said so far. Those protons or hydrogen ions that ended up over here, they're going to flow through ATP synthase and that's going to allow some ATP to, to be generated. So where your attention should be right now is this ATP and this electron shuttle molecule, NADPH, these two things are going to head to the Calvin cycle. And this is going to be the second half of photosynthesis. 
So um, ignoring that Kelvin cycle for just a second, everything else that's happened on this slide, these are called the light reactions because they depend on light in order to happen. If light wasn't here, then that electron would not get energized and it wouldn't be handed down. None of this would happen. So these are the light reactions. Next up, we're going to head into the Kelvin cycle. And this is something that doesn't require any light in order to take place. So sometimes it's called the dark reactions, the Kelvin cycle. Uh, let's go ahead and complete this out here. So in the Kelvin cycle, what's going to happen is molecules of CO2 are going to be used along with energy from ATP and those high energy electrons from NADPH. So those three ingredients come together in the Kelvin cycle and essentially they get built into a sugar molecule. Each of these carbons in carbon, di uh, carbon dioxide gets connected together in order to form a sugar molecule called glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, G3P. This is a three carbon sugar. And this, this is just something that acts as a building block. We can put two of these together in order to make a glucose molecule. And then remember, um, the plant can, can connect glucose molecules together in order to form cellulose. And that's just the building material of the plant. This is what plant bodies uh, and wood, for example, are made of. So in the end, what's happened? two major things in photosynthesis. Um, the light reactions take place, okay, and then after that the Calvin cycle takes place and the end result is that the plant has built some sugar such as glucose.